I'm retired Colonel Arthur Ronald Burke, OAM. The ADCC is the abbreviation for the Anzac Day Commemoration Committee of Queensland. It is the, the body which is charged overall with the responsibility for Anzac commemorations throughout Queensland. And I was the senior hands-on person on that committee as a volunteer uh, for 23 years. The Anzac Day Commemoration Committee began as an idea of a Mr T.A. Ryan. He proffered the idea to the Premier at the time and they decided that they would uh, hold a great public meeting of the people of Brisbane and get a consensus on how best to commemorate the Gallipoli landings. The Gallipoli landings had torn the youth out of our country and there was a great groundswell of patriotism associated with this and this meeting in the exhibition hall on the 10th of January 1916 moved three motions. Firstly that they should do something to commemorate the 25th of April. Secondly that they should hold it on the 25th of April and encourage other states around Australia and in New Zealand to do likewise. And thirdly, that they should form a committee which drew up a charter and a way of which they were going to commemorate it. Its prime job initially was to design a set of protocols for Anzac Day 1916. The Anzac Day Act of 1921 created a solemn day and so in the morning you had church services and then at 2.25 they marched in the afternoon. They marched from the corner of Elizabeth and George exactly the same as they do today and at 3.15 they stopped, they fired three volleys the last post was sounded and it was carried all down the, the parade. That night uh, at 7pm in every city, town, shire, there was a public meeting. And then at 9 o'clock a gun boomed out in Brisbane and the state came to a standstill. I mean the trams, the printing presses, the railway uh, rolling stock all stopped for one minute's inaugural sacred silence right throughout Queensland. And then in 1931 of course the shrine was commissioned in Anzac Square. Uh, Anzac Day became uh, in 1931 a closed holiday so everything shut down. Up until then, it relied on the good auspices of employers to give veterans time off to go for the Anzac Day March. Then, of course, there was the Vietnam War, and uh, nobody wanted anything to do with wars, uh, with the moratoriums and all that sort of thing then. And it wasn't until 1995, the year Australia remembers, where we had ticker tape parades in the street dancing in the street and all the rest of it where the youth of the 70s, 80s and 90s created this huge bow wave which really kicked off the modern trend in Anzac days. Today we find dawn servers, they've become more important than before. A march mid-morning and then an afternoon of uh, reunions and uh, sporting events and races and that sort of thing. The youth of today are imbued with the, the spirit of Anzac. Every year there seem to be more people at the march and in particular young children waving flags, cheering, holding up signs saying thank you. It kind of puts a lump in your throat. 
Gallipoli formed our very first most important tradition. We were a young nation at the time. We had no traditions except British traditions and it has endured, one of the few that really has endured. And I think it's going to go on forever. We have a saying in the Anzac Day Committee that no child of today should ever grow into adulthood without knowing the story of Anzac, the story of comradeship, of selflessness, of others before self. And whilst ever that is imbued in the children of today, Anzac Day will go on forever.